Joining us now uh, is our friend, uh, former U.N. Ambassador uh, John Bolton, uh, who, of course, served in that position, appointed by George W. Bush. Hello, Mr. Ambassador. How are you, sir? Hi, how are you, Steve? Glad to be with you. Well, my pleasure. Uh, so um, kind of scary, kind of shocking, but thank God he seems to be okay. Yeah, it, uh, I certainly hope the operation went well and uh, and that everything's taken care of, but it just goes to show that uh, having these uh, regular physicals can be very, very important. Absolutely, and, and here's a guy who, you know, we know him for his uh, his uh, obsessiveness so in a good way over exercise and mountain biking and uh, and still in all, you know, it shows that anybody could uh, could develop this kind of thing. Yeah, it's uh, it, it really it, it caught me up short, I must say, when I heard it, but it seems that everything has turned out uh, okay, and that's great news. All right, uh, let's move on, and uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about what's going on in the world. And uh, I guess the news today, oh boy, to quote the Beatles, uh, is that we've, uh, we've launched some drone strikes that have killed four al-Qaeda terrorists in Yemen, and uh, we've now told all Americans to get out of Yemen. We're closing up shop and running away from Yemen. What do you make of that, and, and, and what do you make? Well, you and I haven't had a chance to talk uh, since, uh, since these closures of the embassies, the revelation, and almost to the, all the minutia you can imagine of how we found out, what we found out, you know, and uh, how do you think the administration has handled all this? Well, I think uh, there are several questions. First, in, in response to the information that uh, members of Congress on a bipartisan basis have said they found very serious, uh, but on the basis of this information, I think it was the right thing to do to close the embassies and consulates and issue the travel warning for private American citizens. Uh, you know, we're not uh, playing checkers here. This is very serious business. And I think uh, given our present uh, weakened circumstances, that really is the, the best call to make. I think it raises the larger question uh, about the impact of the president's five years almost now of saying there is no war on terror, the war on terror is over, it's not a terrorist threat, it's a, it's a law enforcement matter. Uh, and the weakness that we've displayed around the world, uh, particularly after the September the 11, 2012 killing of our ambassador in Benghazi, without any retaliation uh, nearly 11 months later. Uh, so the administration's worldview has been, in effect, completely rejected, and uh, and we're seeing now the consequences of operating under the illusions that, that he has operated under. And finally, the idea that administration officials leaked, that the triggering piece of information here was a call that we intercepted from al-Qaeda worldwide leader Ayman al-Zawahiri, it uh, just boggles my mind. I mean, it, it, it was stunning enough that Zawahiri broke communication security in a way that we were able to get hold of the call. But for us then to say it publicly so that everybody in al-Qaeda and every hostile power around the world can now remind themselves they need to be careful about their communications, I mean, it just uh, – it, it, that alone – uh, as we worry about the effect of Edward Snowden and Bradley Manning, it just reminds us that it's our own government that's also causing our, uh, ourselves uh, damage by these leaks. I mean, what would, do you think the motivation for that was to say, see, uh, we need this program, see, we're doing good, uh, what we're doing has to stay, it's working? I mean, what else? But then I think back to Joe Biden, who announced to the world it was SEAL Team 6. Who got Bin yeah, Laden, could. and then three, two months later, SEAL Team Six lost a, a bunch of members uh, in, a, in a horrific, uh, they say, accident, which is under investigation, uh, uh, hopefully by Congress. I mean, what's with these guys? Yeah, it could be just an utter lack of uh, sense and discretion. But, you know, it's also a complete contradiction of the administration's storyline that al-Qaeda is on the road to defeat, that they've defined al-Qaeda to be this narrow sliver of activity, uh, a small group of people in Waziristan along the Afghan-Pakistan border that they've been decimating with drone strikes, thus trying to prove their point that the war on terror is over. In fact, when you say that this kind of communication is going on, and in fact, when you look at the extent 
of the territory, the number of countries uh, where we closed embassies and consulates. Uh, in fact, it does disprove the entire operating hypothesis of the Obama administration that al Qaeda is on the road to defeat. So, uh, in a way, leaking the information may have helped them in some sense, but it utterly re rebuts their their entire worldview about uh, the nature of the terrorist threat. We're talking to uh, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations John Bolton here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Um, all right, let's talk about about uh, Benghazi and uh, what we have uh, heard uh, in reports uh, over the past uh, the several days, uh, and, and that is that um, there were several dozen CIA agents on the ground at the time uh, that reportedly, uh, according to some, they were working on some kind of covert arms smuggling operation, uh, arms from Libya over to Syria. That's what prompted this. That's what this was all about, this attack, and that these uh, survivors are being shipped around the country, uh, having their names changed, and, and, and undergoing uh, polygraph tests on a regular basis uh, out of the norm to make sure they're not talking to anybody. If this is true, Mr. Ambassador, this is a cover-up of proportions uh, that I can't even uh, uh, imagine uh, uh, you know, when it's happened before. Well, I think Congressman Frank Wolf has been has been on this point about the non-disclosure agreements that some of these people are being forced to sign and and the like. <clears throat> and I think it's been clear for some time that the administration's unwillingness to allow these people to come forward uh, ha has something to do with their effort to prevent Congress from learning what happened in Benghazi uh, that night. I mean, it, there's it's nothing new that there were a lot of CIA personnel present. That's what the whole annex was, not the consulate, but the annex building. Uh, and I think it was probably pretty clear that they were engaged uh, in a weapons buyback program. We've done this in many places around the world. We're, what, we, what they were trying to get back were uh, manned portable uh, anti-aircraft missiles and things like that that had come loose from Gaddafi's arsenals. Now, whether in fact, uh, as had also been previously reported, these weapons were in turn being shipped to the opposition in Syria. Uh, I'd be amazed if that were true, given the Obama administration's unwillingness to get involved in Syria. But I'd sure like to know what the what the facts are, and and uh, I don't think we know what the facts are at this point. Uh, I can understand why the CIA would be reluctant to have its people testify to what was involved in the weapons buyback program. I understand that. You can handle that by doing it in a classified setting. What is not explicable, though, is not allowing these people to tell Congress what happened on the night of September the 11th. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, let me ask you, sir, about the... Uh this uh, trial of uh, Major Hassan, um, you know, he wrote a letter to Fox News uh, last week uh, saying that uh, basically this was a terrorist attack. He did it for Allah, he did it for Muslims. Uh, we're finding out more and more, which, which was obvious from the start. But, of course, this has been classified uh, by the government as a, a, a case of workplace violence. And I had uh, Staff Sergeant Manning on yesterday who was shot six times. And, uh, of course, the financial hardships that he's gone through because of that classification and the others uh, and the families of the members of the uh, of the victims uh, uh, is horrific. Uh, so today I see the headline is as the trials uh, begins, evidence will show I'm the shooter. That's what Hassan is saying. The spectacle of him being able to cross-examine the very people he shot to me, this has become a circus. So to weigh in on, on on where we are with this trial and what it's become, and and also the the, the refusal of the administration to reclassify this. And even after the president, when he gave his speech on terror uh, several weeks ago, uh, said uh, that this uh, th this uh, shooter, this American shooter, as he put it, was influenced by jihad. Yeah. Well, I think the administration's handling of the whole Fort, Fort Hood shooting has been disgraceful. And uh, uh, in the answers that Hassan provided to Catherine Herridge of Fox News, he said, among other things, he renounced his U.S. citizenship. Uh, I'm told it's a little bit more complicated than just uh, writing a letter like that, but, you know, let's find a way to make him happy if that's what he wants. I'm happy to have him renounce his <laughs> citizenship. He resigned his commission in the military. Thank God for that, too. Uh, but, but this trial, I mean, ironically, uh, tragically, actually, coming as it does at the time of this uh, worldwide uh, threat from al-Qaeda, uh, is another demonstration of the Obama administration's unwillingness to come to terms with the reality of international terrorism. No, nobody who has even looked at this a little bit 
believes that it's workplace violence. Of course it's terrorism. Uh, and the administration's defenders who say, oh, well, but, you know, that's not really al-Qaeda. It's lone wolf terrorism. Look, if I were al-Qaeda's central leadership, I would think that lone wolf terrorism would be just about the most efficient way to proceed, one person at a time. You communicate with them over Skype and the Internet, um, uh, and, and it's, a, it's a much better way than trying to get large teams of people uh, moved around the world. You know, the terrorists have adopted to the Internet uh, better than, than our, than our uh, administration's counterterrorism policymakers. Uh, we know, in fact, that uh, Hassan has said he got a lot of his inspiration from, uh, from al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, right. in Yemen of all places. So this is, uh, this is a different uh, way to implement terrorist attacks. There's, there's no doubt about that. But anybody who doesn't think this is part of the al-Qaeda terrorist threat hasn't been paying attention. Absolutely. And uh, one final question, sir. Uh, your your um, plans to uh, possibly uh, run for president, where, where are we with that? I know that, uh, for instance, Congressman Peter King was in Iowa yesterday. Uh, what's your itinerary look like? Well, uh, what I'm what I'm determined to do is to find a way in the 2014 elections to make sure that national security issues are uh, get the prominence in our political debate that they deserve. To try and find a way to support candidates who who believe in a strong national defense and foreign policy, and to get this agenda more widely discussed. So, you know, 2016 is a long way away. I think this 2014 congressional election is going to be huge. But I'll be going to places like New Hampshire because that's how you raise the issue. That's how you make it prominent. That's how you make it more important in the list of national priorities, which I think is critical. Gotcha. Mr. Ambassador, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. My pleasure. That's uh, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Uh, fascinating, fascinating stuff and just insane that this administration would announce to the world that we intercepted the head of al-Qaeda's telephone call. I, 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 wouldn't you want to keep that a secret so he'll keep making telephone calls?